Hey yo, Spaghetto here, and welcome back to Doki Doki New Eyes. Um, today we're going to continue off where I left on the cliffhanger last time. You're welcome for that. So we're on page one still? Okay. Uh, oh, frick. Okay, there we go. Whoops. There we go. Hallway. <coughs> and Sayori, well, she was all happy and cheerful as usual, but I could sense something was wrong. Don't you think she's been acting... Weirder and weirder these last few days? Indeed. I was just talking about it with Monica. I don't want to make it sound like I'm minding other people's business, but I'm concerned. And there's nothing I can do about it. A thought flashes across my mind. Back when I saw Sayori's cut, why didn't I do anything? Even though cutting makes some people feel good, it made me realize it's not healthy. I've been stupid. Yes, there is something you can do about it, Yuri. And also, Yuri, thank you for realizing it's stupid to cut. Thank you. And we've talked about it already. I try to remember the latest talks we've had. What can I do about it? I'm powerless in this situation. Can't remember? Uh, I'm sorry, I really can't. Gosh, what did I tell you yesterday? We have to try seeing her outside of school. She's our friend, right? So why don't we uh, do what real friends do? Our outing at the cinema was really entertaining, and I believe Sayori enjoyed her time out. Well, despite her behavior when we mentioned Noodle Boy. Natsuki sighs. <sighs> don't you think that's the least we can do for her? That, that makes sense. You know, I love to be closer to Sayori sometimes. And even closer to Needle Boy. Natsuki's expression suddenly changes. Let's just keep it at Sayori, alright? So I'm not even allowed to talk about him? I'm happy for Natsuki and her newly found friendship. But this is a little too much. Alright. Yes, Sayori. Do you think she'd act she'd actually like spending time with me why do you think I asked you to spend time with her we're all in the same club aren't we this isn't a pure coincidence Yuri this is fate so have a bit of confidence and go sh show Sayori how much uh, you enjoy your friendship Natsuki's unexpectedly poetic today this is deep Natsuki I know I know I should teach you my ways one day. I sarcastically chuckle. <laughs> of course. Natsuki goes back into the classroom. I stay behind for a few seconds. Natsuki was right. I should show Sayori that our friendship counts. I've never been good at showing my emotions, but Sayori needs it. However, something is in this conversation left me feel uh, something in this conversation left me feeling something bitter. Why can't I talk about Noodle Boy? He is merely a member of our club. I'm allowed to appreciate him, right? I shake my head, trying to forget Natsuki's sudden reaction. I'm free to talk about whoever, whoever, whoever I want. As I enter, I see Monica talking to Sayori at the back of the room. Noodle Boy is sitting at the table, looking at nothing in particular. He looks lost. Is he really that worried about Sayori? I stand there for a few seconds staring at him. I'd like to tell him everything's fine, that I'll take care of Sayori. But but really, who better than him to do that? <coughs> <clears throat> He's known her for so many years. Before I can even end the ongoing debate in my head, Natsuki shyly approaches Noodle Boy. I move away. I don't want to hear what they're talking about. I may end up getting curious, and I'll probably ask Natsuki about it. It's not worth the risk. I look around the room. Natsuki and Noodle Boy are talking. Monica is still whispering something to Sayori. And I'm just standing here, looking at everyone. Ah, uh, this is awkward. I sit down looking at the floor. I want to grab my book and read it, but just like every single time, the closer I'm getting to the end, the more I don't want it to end. 
the paradoxical feeling. Monica finally stands up, glancing one last time at Sayori before finally walking towards me. I inquisitively look at her. It looks like she understands my concern. She sits down next to me and smiles. I just had a talk with Sayori. I, I was that, yes. How, how is she? From what I've seen, she's fine. Maybe just feeling a little tired or low, but who doesn't every now and again? Ah, uh, I see what you mean, yeah. You're lying, Monica! You're lying! But doesn't she want to join us now? Because it still doesn't explain why she's away from us. Oh yeah, that. Well, I think I can guess why she's a little distant. Is that so? How come then? My tone probably sounds awfully curious. <coughs> Excuse me, but I don't mind. I'm concerned. Nobody can say the contrary. I'm sorry, I don't think I can tell you anything about it. Not now, at least. Maybe you should ask her about it tomorrow. Tomorrow? Natsuki thinks I should show my friendship to Sayori. Do you think, do you think I should do it? Definitely. Monica's instant reaction startles me. R really? But I don't know much about her. Won't it be a little awkward? Yuri, you're supposed to be the most poetic one here. Friendship defies both words and logic. It doesn't matter if you don't know much about her, or if you feel like it'll be awkward. As long as you show your true feelings, as long as you show who you are and what you can do for her, then you're her friend and a good friend on top of that. I... I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. What is Monica... What Monica just said genuinely made me smile. Friendship defies both words and logic. It makes sense. Maybe I should just trust myself. I nodded Monica, smiling at her. Monica, thank you. Don't thank me. I'm just being logical. She glances behind me. It's time to get started with her poems. Monica walks away and gets ready to call everyone. I slowly walk to the main table, glancing at Sayori as I do so. It'll be fine. She'll be fine today, after what Monica told her. I turn my head back to Monica. Okay, everyone. Why don't we share our poems now? <clears throat> I open my bag and I grab my, pon my poem I wrote during lunch break. I'm proud of it. And I'll soon get to know what Noodle Boy's done. Has he improved over time? I'm pretty sure he did. Even he... Even if he's getting inspired by Natsuki's style, he's still improving. I glance at him. He immediately walks towards Natsuki, ready to share his poem. I was expecting that. I'll just wait for him to choose me after her then. As usual, Monica approaches me, obviously wanting to share her poem. This is becoming a habit. I wait for her to hand it to me. I can't wait to hear what you think about it. <laughs> As usual, I guess. Did you have any particular idea for your poem? Uh, well... Just read it. You tell me if you understand. Uh, sure. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders Earth, a lady who knows everything, a beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, purpose, and all that is ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost to drift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the, in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow, I fall. Huh, interesting. Oh. And I fall and fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. 
look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I could speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. We seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a, a gust of wind. Huh. Her poem sure was lengthy today. Is that Monica talking about becoming like, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Man, I'm blanking. But like, self-aware, I'll just say that. She's becoming self-aware. It felt different. Something about it is unsettling. I have to admit, I like it less than the one from yesterday. I couldn't really understand the subject, nor could I uh, feel anything in particular in it. Ah, uh, this is bothering me. What am I supposed to tell Monica? I worriedly glance at her. She is always as happy and proud of her poems. Wouldn't it be awful, awfully mean for me to tell her I didn't like it? But I have to be honest. If I'm not honest, then this club has no point. What am I supposed to do? Uh, Yuri, is everything alright? Huh? I jerk my head up. I have no choice then. Yes, everything's fine. I was just thinking. And, uh, Monica, are you sure it's fine if, if I give you my honest opinion? Will you hate me because of it? My, my, Yuri. I've already told you. If I didn't want an honest opinion, I'd ask someone else. Judging from the face you're making right now, I'm guessing my poem isn't really good, is it? No! I look down, trying to keep it a neutral expression. I haven't said it's bad. Alright, I'll try to give you as much constructive criticism as possible. Oh man. <laughs> okay, I'm listening. Hmm, the first thing that struck me when I read your poem was the rhythm. Comparatively to the ones you wrote before, I think this one was different. It's not bad, it's just not precise, and it bothered me while voicing it in my head. Next is the length. I had to turn over to keep reading it. And I know some poets like to write long poems, and I totally respect it, however. When you want to convey emotions and ideas, it's better to keep it short and powerful. You tend to easily forget the details you wrote at the beginning, and it ends up being hard to follow for the reader. As I was getting to the end, I had already forgotten about the start. And finally, the subject itself. I understand you wanted to make, make it abstract, maybe to hide its real meaning or to give it some more charm. However, I feel like you mixed too many abstract and concrete elements here. It made me unable to understand whether you were talking about something symbolic or possibly contemptible. Well, to conclude, I'd say your poem definitely isn't bad. It's merely less consistent than the ones you've written prior. I enjoyed it though. But something tells me you weren't really into it when you wrote it, am I right? I stop staring at the poem and I look up at Monica. She's attentively listening to me smiling. I take a few seconds to realize how big of a monologue I just recited. Oh my, did I? Uh, did I just monologue again? I I'm sorry, I had so many things to say. It's fine, it's fine. I really liked hearing your thoughts. Everything you said made perfect sense. I tried something a little different, but I guess I have my own style after it. I'll try rewriting this one sometime. Uh, and about the last inquiry. Yeah, I wasn't too focused when I wrote it. I had some things on my mind, like murdering Sayori, but, you know, the usual. I'll do my best to bring an interesting po poem for the festival. I'm sure you'll write something great, Monica. I'll be cheering you on. <laughs> Thank you, Yuri. Your turn now. I'm really curious what you've written for today. Oh, it's... I hesitate for a few seconds. Natsuki and I decided to write about the same subject. <coughs> <coughs> oh, okay. Now, now, Yuri. 
that'll be up to me. I'll give you my honest opinion too. I finally hand her my poem. She puts hers away and starts reading mine. She looks incredibly focused as if she were trying to understand every single word I wrote. Monica's face is so funny when she's focused. I, it's almost cute. <gasps> Does Yuri like Monica? Gasp! She suddenly perks her head up and stares at me intently. I don't want to make it sound like I'm begging, but... Do you think you could teach me some of your techniques someday? Huh? I don't know how I should answer. Is Monica merely teasing me, or does she really want me to do it? I'm yearning to do it. I'd love to share my passion with someone. I try to conceal my smile, but I don't last five seconds. Sure, I, uh, I mean, it'd be a good idea. But your style is great. I'm sure we could do some amazing things together. If you want. For real? Thank you, I'd love hearing a thing or two from your writing. I know it's not really your writing in a way, but... She practically mumbles the last part, making me unable to understand the rest of her sentence. Pardon? Oh, no, nothing. I was saying nonsense. She hands me my poem, looking a little embarrassed. Truth is, I was trying to imitate your style with my poem. I didn't really succeed. That's why I hope you'll teach me some interesting things. I'm flattered by Monica's revelation. I shyly smile at her once again. I, I look forward to working with you. She turns around, gently humming. I should be great grateful for having such wonderful friends. No matter how bad things get, they're always there for me. If they weren't there, it I'd be, I'd be all alone. I smile to myself. I'm a lucky person. I grab my book. I don't know how long it'll take for Noodle Boy to talk to Natsuki. As soon as I think about him, my hand frees. I had managed to forget about him, but now it's just... Uh, calm. Calm down. I'll just read for a little bit. In the corner of my eye, I spot him walking towards me, waving. I close the book and I try to smile. I'm conflicted. After what he said yesterday and how he didn't agree with my arguments, how can I say no to his smile? Even his writing is becoming more and more interesting. This is unfair. He hands me his poem looking away. Without another word, I start reading it. Jeez, he looks like he's in a sour mood. <clears throat> Three, two, one, go. Kawaii, kiss, marshmallow, melody, milk, moose, nibble, nightgown, papa, parfait, playground, poof, pout, puppy, swimsuit, shopping, skipping, socks, spinning, sticky. How is this poetry? It's not poetry. Okay. Just like how saying Gucci Gang over and over again isn't music. Ah! Okay. Hmm. Once again, I'm feeling conflicted. His poems utter garbage and not actually poetry. Did he just pull out a freaking thesaurus and just pick out numbers and alphabetize them? Numbers, silly mean, I meant words. Sorry, I must be tired from staying up all night again. I can't help but let my personal feelings get in the way. His style is clearly starting to look like something. However, this something looks awfully close to Natsuki's. I shouldn't, it shouldn't bother me, really. But it's, I don't know, I don't think it's fitting for his personality. I silently apologize to Natsuki in the back of my head. Uh, decided to try something different today? Uh, I guess so. Is that good or bad? Well, neither. I have my preferences. But it would be unfair of me to call something good or bad based on that. All good until now. I'm not letting my personal interests get in the way here. It's making me sound awfully cold. I hope I'm not doing... I hope I'm doing the right thing. I understand why he's trying to imitate her style, but... The goal here is to find his own style. Getting inspiration is good, however, imitating isn't. As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. 
Huh? Why me? I look at the ground. Why? Why is he scared of disappointing me? I can't- it can't be because- because he's afraid of my opinion, right? Or is it because he actually wants to impress me? No, that's... That's just stupid. He'd try to impress Natsuki, right? Well, you're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? I nervously play with my hair. Of course. This is how he sees me. I'm not a know-it-all or someone who, who would purposely be mean to someone else. This is nothing but pure speculation. We've barely spoken after all. That must be terrible. Huh? For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri. It's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. I just meant I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to those sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthink- o Overthinking? Being disliked. My eyes suddenly widen. This isn't what we're supposed to be talking about. I don't dare look at Noodle Boy's face. I probably just sound miserable. I have friends here. I don't need more, right? What I said wasn't true. No, no, it wasn't. I'm not used to being disliked. Yuri. What, what, what am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's just move on. Luckily, Noodle Boy doesn't look too bothered. He quickly changes the subject. I'm relieved. I don't know if he's doing this for me, but I'm grateful. Alright. Do you want to share your poem now? Uh, okay. Here. I hand him my poem, crossing my fingers with my free hand. Natsuki's poem dealt with the same subject, so he'll probably prefer it. But I know he's going to have an objective look at it. At least, I hope so. A few minutes pass before he finally stops reading. He's just standing there looking at me. Won't he say something? Am I supposed to talk first here? Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about. But I did my best to take a more metaphorical approach to it. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, so Natsuki hasn't told him about our little literary agreement then. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was, amu it was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted to write about the same topic as each other again. I see. His reaction is awfully mundane. It's like he doesn't really care in the end. That's because he doesn't! He hasn't really said anything about the poem itself. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought process. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, I'm, I'm not surprised that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. I'm not like... It's not like I have particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. I'm sounding like an idiot, aren't I? I can't just talk about Natsuki like that. But something just compels me to try and justify myself. I don't want Noodle Boy to hate me, but I don't want Natsuki to hate me either. It's hard to please everyone. It's too hard. But... Well, I suppose it's not bad to write about something similar, simple on occasion. It could be refreshing, you know. It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Wow, he hardly said anything. I saw his noodle boy turns around. We haven't really talked about my poem in the end. I guess I'm not really the most desirable person. Gosh dang it. Oh man, Noodle Boy, you're so dense, it makes me cry sometimes. I should have acted more outgoing, maybe. Like, like Natsuki. But I'm not like her, I can't change myself just for his sake. 
Well, can I? I shake my head. This is wrong. I want to be the best for Natsuki, period. I see her sitting at the table waiting for the poem sharing session to finish. For the first time this week, I'm the one who approaches her to share my poem. Natsuki? Hmm. We're supposed to share poems, you know. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, of course, that's right. It looks like she doesn't really want to share her poem. Did something happen between her and Noodle Boy? This is none of my business, after all. I brightly smile at Natsuki. I'm sure you've written something impressive. Impressing. Hmm. Can I read it? Of course! I can't see it! Your mind is so full of... Uh, okay, hold on. Options. Um, settings. Uh, skip unseen text after choices full screen display. Man. Is it like an option where like I can read the the poems is like just text? I don't know, man. Uh okay. Uh return. And if oh my freaking goodness. Uh, I have to admit, I'm impressed. Alright. This mod irritates me because the writing on some of the poems is way too small and I can't read it that fast because like there's a limited time like in history does it appear hold on no uh, her poem is considerably longer than usual and something about it feels different like she wrote it with some real feelings behind it I'd say her take at such a cliche subject is really great this is good Natsuki I really liked it. Is that so? I'm glad you did. She doesn't say much more. After a few seconds of silence, she holds her hand out for me to give her her poem back. I hand her my poem. She reads it one or, one or two times and occasionally squinting her eyes. After a minute of reading, she finally puts it on the desk. Hmm. Yeah, it's good. I think you did well. It's impressive. She hesitates a little. Tell me, what did Noodle Boy think of it? Why does that matter? Just, did he say anything about it? Ooh, she's jealous! Jealous! Woo! I slowly sigh. <sighs> no, he didn't. Our interactions have been a little awkward, so he, to say the least. For a second, I'd swear I saw Natsuki sighing in relief. Wow. Awkward. I grab my poem on my desk and I stand up. Well, thank you for sharing. She nods at me and I silently walk back to my chair. Just why does she have to talk about him at, at this instant? We're supposed to be sharing our work. We wrote about the subject because we wanted to see how each of us would interpret it, interpret it right? And we barely exchange our opinions. This is frustrating. Maybe she's just in a bad mood today. Nope, she likes the boy and she wants you to stay away from him. It's simple. Yeah, that must be it. I look around the room. It looks like Monica's done with Noodle Boy. The latter subject is walking towards Sayori, poem in hand. Just like he did with me, he hands her, her, poem. He hands her the poem without a word. As I look at the other side of the room, I see Monica and Atsuki chatting. I decide to approach them. Hopefully, I'll be able to join in on the conversation. And I'm not too sure about how to feel. I don't want to talk about it with Yuri either. What? <gasps> how come? I'm sure she'd be glad to help you. No, she wouldn't. I've seen the way she looks at him, you know? She's so off. She's often staring. Just what are they talking about? Don't tell me. You should be more considerate, Natsuki. I understand that you'd like to get closer to Noodle Boy, but keep in mind Yuri's been there for you. Uh, I've got circumstances. I really can't explain what it's about, but I promise you Yuri's very important to me. However, I... Listen, I just can't tell you. Monica shakes her head. 
I slowly turn around to quietly get back to my chair. However, as I do, I, my hip hits one of the tables. The two of them instantly notice me. Yuri! Have you happened to hear what we said? Oh, uh, uh, just a little bit of it, I guess. Then do you know what the, do you know about the circumstances Natsuki's talking about? Hey! Don't talk about it so nonchalantly! Uh, circumstances? I haven't really heard anything about this. What's wrong with Natsuki? Uh, listen, this has nothing to do with you two, alright? Let's just get this palm section done for today. She, she signs us to go away. How mean. I can't put my finger on what Natsuki's problem is, and it seems like Monica's having a problem with it too. She has a complex expression on her face. Aren't you a little worried about her? Oh, not really. I think I already know what's going to happen, so I'm not too worried. You, you know what's going to happen? <laughs> I think I do. But let's let things happen naturally, alright? She glances at Noodle Boy walking back to us with a confused expression. It takes a few seconds for me to notice that Sayori isn't in the room anymore. Just where did she go? Without skipping a beat, Monica immediately gets ready for her next club activities. Seems like our conversation is over then. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figure out, figuring out... Hold on one second! Is it just me, or did you say something strange now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. <laughs> catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez! Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. It's because you're the one causing a lot of the mood. Also, Monica kind of told Sayori to kill herself. And then Sayori ran off, so... Uh. Natsuki points her finger at me. It's true that despite the good mood that had settled in my head this morning, everything is quite unsettling now. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Dun dun dun. Hmm, something terrible is going to happen. Yep. I feel a chill go down my spine. Suddenly, I hear Noodle Boy sarcastically chuckle. In your books, maybe. Look, the only different, uh, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Uh, it seems you're right. Indeed, not having Sayori with us feels drastically different. It's like her presence soothes us all a little bit. I don't know if she's aware of her influence here. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. I signed Natsuki to lower her voice a little. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on! For some reason, I'm feeling extremely irritated by Natsuki's nonchalant behavior. Instead of using such a vocabulary, maybe she should have... Uh, she should be a little more concerned about her friends. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to, to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. As embarrassing as the situation is, I'd love to hear how Noodle Boy respond to this. Ooh, Natsuki, that was a little bit mean. Natsuki clearly had put some thought into her words. Ah, uh, no. Uh, first of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh. I wasn't planning on interrupting, but I'm intrigued. From my point of view, it looks like Noodle Boy was the one avoiding people today. 
<laughs> Quit proc, maybe. That curious expression coming from Yuri of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say then? Monica doesn't answer. Either she ignored his request or she simply didn't hear it. There'd be no reason to ignore Noodle Boy, so I believe she must be under some stress. Aren't we all? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing! That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Natsuki does her iconic humph to show her determination. Challenge accepted! As for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, she suddenly stops talking. Seems like she doesn't really know what I can be useful for. Yuri, you can... Uh, um... Monica's voice is suddenly much softer. Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. I look down at my feet. This is awkwardly depressing. I'd love to help, but in the end, I'm just as lost as Monica. I don't even know what I could do, what I could help with. N n no, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. N now, Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. If she were around, this matter would have already been settled. But she's here and I can't help it. Be concerned about her, too. Too many things to focus on. Uh, that may be the case. But if I can't... And if I can't also be the leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have a beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. I slowly raise my head and stare at Monica. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. I can already see in my mind what I'd like to do. I haven't thought of... How have I not thought about this earlier? I love working on this aspect of the festival. Creating something both powerful and beautiful that catch the eye. Something colorful, maybe. Something that show people what kind of group we are. Yes, that could work. Your mind is really racing, I see. Noodle Boy's comment gets me out of my thoughts. Right, this isn't over yet. One more member needs to be assigned a role. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Noodle Boy. Uh, the one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, you could be useful at my house. Both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. <laughs> I would be really appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Without even thinking, I imagine what a weekend, Noodle Boy, what a weekend with Noodle Boy could be like. Spending a day with him working on our festival preparations. Can I really refuse? No, no, I can't. I'm sorry, Natsuki. Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Without letting me finish my sentence, Natsuki starts talking. So she wants to be with him, too. Not that I'm surprised, though. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I can give you. <laughs> Dirty work. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. She keeps talking, always finding more excuses. However, one thing's come to my attention. Um, 
If I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Noodle Boy may not like being around you if you make him out, of, um, out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited uh, to assist <laughs> to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that! Actually, yes you did. How hard can it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Noodle Boy too. Oh, uh, wh what are you saying? It'll be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? This girl. She's not the person I know. Always trying to fight. Can't she understand I just want someone to help me? Doesn't she get enough time by his side already? It's not too much to ask, right? Once again, I feel anger boiling inside me. Guys, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Noodle Boy to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know. So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... Uh, I'm surprised as well. Monica of all people. In a way, it's true she's been working hard on all of us late for all of us lately. She hasn't even gotten some time to get to know Noodle Boy. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez! Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Noodle Boy, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. <laughs> Very well. In that case... The three of us are, intent are intently staring at Noodle Boy. I think the outcome of his choice is predictable. But there's a little hope that he'll choose me, right? Please. Well, baking sounds like it could be fun. And you guys made it sound like a lot of work, too. It could probably use two people. Don't worry. Baking is a ton of fun. You'll definitely agree. Huh? Just a minute ago, you were saying that. That's because... Never mind, okay? Well, anyway... You'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? My mind has been processing what just happened for the last few minutes. I wasn't expecting his reaction. I'll end up doing it alone, huh? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. <laughs> That's good. Judging by Noodle Boy and Monica's reactions, I may have said it too dramatically. But I am a bit saddened. However, maybe it's for the best. I still don't know if Mom will be back this weekend. Natsuki doesn't seem to care about the current situation and keeps going. So that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yeah! Everything except the performance is gonna be awesome! I don't think that really counts. Oh wait, whoops! Noodle Boy, your voice got high for a second. I don't think that really counts. What about you, Noodle Boy? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. Oh, ooh. I know they're talking about me, but I can't bring myself to talk. I don't want to. My thoughts are conflicting with one another, and I'm here to support Natsuki with the lack of compassion she's shown. Thank God it didn't end up being another argument. I don't think she'd have forgiven me this time. I even wonder if she's fully forgave me about the last time. It's not... I mean, it's not that big a deal or anything. Well, it might not just be that. I think that Yuri might be just feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do, and then nobody offering to help. I wanted to smile at Noodle Boy's Boy statement. It's not particularly wrong. 
I know that my friends value me, of course, but this may be putting a little too much pressure on me in the end. That doesn't mean... Uh... She glances at everyone alternatively. Look! I'm startled as Natsuki suddenly puts her hands on my shoulders. Yuri! You really are the most talented one here! And you're going to help make the event a lot more welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too. But you're going to make the atmosphere special. That will be really important for the way people feel during the performance. So, you need to stop being dumb and forgive yourself and give more credit. I'm at a loss for words. This, this is, this is Natsuki. This is my friend. She was obviously trying to lighten the mood, but this is the exact kind of behavior she displayed before. I'm, I feel a little relieved. This weekend will go well after all. Natsuki turns around trying to hide her face. She's almost likely blushing. Her last sentence though. Natsuki wouldn't call me dumb. Dummy is the worst thing she said, uh, she'd call me if she were being sincere. You didn't really mean that, did you? Um, not really, but... I stopped looking at Atsuki to concentrate on everyone else. Monica looks a little bit surprised. Even she wasn't expecting to hear Natsuki speak this way. Who would expect it anyway? Natsuki isn't the type of person that would say this out in the open. Maybe I made her a little uneasy in the end. If I hadn't been so dramatic. I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best. And all of us are going to make it a really great event. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Indeed, after a quick glance outside, the sun is pretty low in the sky. Just how long did we stay here? Stay in here? And where is Sayori? I, t I totally forgot about her. Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely got to do any reading today, so... Fair enough. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone accepts Natsuki grabs their bags and ready to exit the club room. Monica and I exit the room first, exchanging meaningless words. Before we exit the room, I hear Natsuki calling to Noodle Boy. He waves at us before walking back into the room. Of course, he isn't going to walk home with us. Now it's just me and Monica. As Monica closes the door, sh she sighs. Close one, huh? Excuse me? You were about to start another argument with Natsuki, am I right? That was close. Oh, I, yes. But it seems that she was able to remember who we are in the first place. <laughs> and who are you, Yuri? I'm just teasing you. Oh, you scared me for a second. I really thought you'd started philosophically questioning me. No, I would never do that. Shall we get going then? Of course. The wind is blowing softly. Truly a great feeling. In the end, even though things went alright today, I feel calm. Finally, the end of the week. I'll finally get to know a fussy mom again. And I'm probably uh, get, going to get to see Sayori too. I'm concerned about her, but if I make um, her understand that she's important to me, I hope it'll change something for her. I smile to myself. It's only after a few seconds that I notice Monica staring at me. Is, is something the matter, Monica? <laughs> no, not really. It's just good seeing you smiling like that. You look, uh, you look surprisingly calm after what just happened. It's just that I've decided to be a little more grateful for all the wonderful moments I'm spending with you. Walking outside, enjoying fresh breeze, talking to you on a personal level. Sure, I'm a little disappointed in Natsuki's behavior and the fact 
and the fact that I can't stay with Noodle Boy. But I think I should take pride in those simple things around me. After all, they made um, me the person I am today. And as long as I can still enjoy them, that's all that counts. You're right. Spring weather is sure something, right? Yes, I can never get enough of the warm weather. Butterflies and birds, flowers. Such great scenery to write and imagine, isn't it? Butterflies. Oh, wait. Butterflies, birds, flowers. Do you happen to like nature that much, Yuri? Of course. I always feel at ease when I'm surrounded by nature. It feels like I'm free in a way, and it makes me feel like all the animals and all the plants are with me. I started taking the time to smell the scent of flowers around us. I'm a bit the same. I think I know some places that can interest you. Would you like having a look at it? And that is where I'm calling this episode today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe. Check out the Discord description if you'd like to. Um, comment down below what you thought of this episode. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!